Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we're gonna take a look at a couple of tape machine plugins by IK Multimedia. This is the Tape Machine 440 as well as the Tape Machine 24. We're also gonna do another video after this. You'll see the link in the description box below where we take a look at the other two tape machines from IK Multimedia, which makes up the Tape Machine Collection, which is a four plugin bundle that has four different tape machines. We're gonna walk through the feature set. We're gonna listen to it here on our mix. Um, and you guys can check it out. And then you guys can always go check it out at IK Multimedia's website if you wanna pick it up for yourself. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell. Also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com because I wanna give you a free mixing course, free mixing course worth 50 bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting home recording made easy .com. and if you stick around till the end of the video i'm going to give you a couple of free gifts and other things as well so let's check it out so let's jump on on here to studio one so here are the two tape machine plugins we're going to look at this time around we're going to take a look at the tape 24 and the 440. i'm going to go ahead and close the uh 440 here we're going to take a look and a listen to the tape 24 first so these are really cool tape machine plugins now i own lots of different tape machine plugins by several different manufacturers and they're all got their special uh they're all got their special features to them and they all have a unique sound to them which I really really like. What I like about IK Multimedia's tape machine models is that they're a really rich and they're very colorful sounding which I really like and the four tape machines as you'll hear over the next two videos are wildly different in the way that they sound so you have a ton of tonal variations. Um, which is really cool. Now these tape machines, the Tape 24 as well as the other ones, these are really designed to be on your master bus. They're not really designed to be across every single track on your mix, similar to something like the Virtual Tape Machine by Slate Digital. And the reason for that is these are really kind of CPU heavy intensive. Just having one uh, plug-in on here, you'll see if I view my uh, performance monitor here in Studio One, we're running at 32%. This is just one plug-in instantiated the other ones are turned off right now so you want to be able to put 50 of these in your session but that's not what they're designed to do so let's take a, um, a walk through this and let's talk a little bit about the tape 24 so i got some notes here so the tape 24 is modeled on an mci jh24 from the 1980s that physical tape machine this is a transformerless um uh, design and it's an opt amp design it's got a very clear, transparent, and adds a, monitor, a moderate, if you will, amount of polish to the mix. So it's kind of clean, kind of transparent. It's not really too, too colorful uh, and adds a nice little sheen to the top of the mix. Okay, now if we walk through the features on this thing, um, it's pretty simple. So over on the left-hand side, we have our reset button here. If you wanted to read every, reset everything back to its default settings, we have our input that we can crank up the signal level to hit the tape machine as hard as we'd like. We have this button called True Stereo. Now what True Stereo is, is when it's engaged, when it's lit, this is gonna add a little bit of a slight EQ level and distortion differences between the left and right channels, the way a real tape machine would. Even if a tape machine was perfectly calibrated, um, there, the way the mechanics of the tape machine works is there always is a little bit of slight variation between the left and the right. It's what kind of makes a tape machine sound a little bit more authentic. It's not something that you're gonna hear really um, audibly and you're gonna go, wow, there's a big difference between the left and right speaker. It's not like that, it's done in a very subtle way and it's constantly changing and you can uh, turn that off if you just want it to be perfectly from left to right same level same EQ same kind of distortion levels you could turn that off but some of the magic is keeping it on to make it more authentic to what a real tape machine sounds like then you have transport modeling transport modeling is where they've actually modeled the transport controls and you can either bypass that or you can um, if you turn this off then all you're really doing is going um, you're just going through the input section. When you engage this, there you're going to have, um, it's going to um, add some slight irregularities to the tape movement, which creates small alterations to the audio. So by going through the transport part of the tape machine, it's going to give you some more, again, some more of that little, you know, you know, irregular type things that happen when you pass audio through a mechanical device, something like a tape machine. 
okay? And then you have the uh, the repo, repro I should say. Repro is when the audio goes through the entire audio signal. It goes through the input, the output stages, and all the different uh, tape machine, the playheads, and all of that stuff. If you want to disengage that by uh, just clicking on the input, then what that means is that the signal's just going to go through the input uh, electronics and the output electronics, and it's going to bypass the electronics of the actual mechanical part of the tape machine. So you can choose input or repro. And again, I typically will keep it on repro. Then we have our different tape formulas here, and all of their plugins have the same tape formulas. So um, we have the 250, which is a, um, a 3M, Scotch 3M uh, formula. Then we have the 456, which is an Ampex formula. We have the uh, 499, which is the Ampex uh, Grandmaster Gold uh, formula. And then the GP9 is, the, uh, is a Grandmaster Platinum. Um, and they're all going to have a slight, in, a slight different uh, variation to the EQ, as you'll hear as we'll, we'll cycle through them. This particular tape machine can either be at 30 ips per second or 15 ips per second. The slower the tape speed, the little bit more compression, and you're going to get a little bit more round around the bottom end. 30 ips per second is going to be a little bit less of that. We have uh, the, some calibration settings where you could play around with the bias and the level, the high frequency EQ, the low frequency EQ. Um, and then you also have your output section here where if you boost the input to hit the tape a little harder, you could turn it down here and level level match it here, and then you can just turn it on and off here, or you can bypass it in the top left-hand corner of the plugin. Okay, so that's what we got. And all of their tape machines are laid out pretty much the same way. They just look slightly different in the actual uh, user interface. So what I have here is I just have a rough uh, track here, rough mix, kind of a piano ballad kind of a track here. We just have a, a bunch of drums, some percussion, bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, piano, and an organ. No vocals in this to do, you know, for, to kind of... Uh, reduce the uh, copyright uh, things that I may end up getting here. And basically what I've done is I just bust everything down to a busing system, drum bus, per percussion, bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, keyboards. And on the bus is the only processing that we have on these raw tracks. As I threw up the uh, IK Multimedia uh, British channel and just quickly dialed in a little bit of EQ and a little bit of compression just to clean up the audio a little bit. I wanted to kind of keep this as transparent as possible so you can really hear what is happening here to the tape machine or what the tape machine is imparting on the audio. Okay, so let's play back a little section of this and then we'll just kind of dial this in a little bit and then I'll take you through and we'll flick through some of the settings, some of the tape formulas and you can hear the difference of the tape 24. So here we go. Okay, so I'm boosting up the input here to hit the tape at around the zero VU, which is which is kind of where you want to go. You want to hit the tape pretty hard here just to kind of, you know, get some of the effect. And I'm turning down the output to level match it. So let's start on the 250 here. We're going to keep all the transport modeling, the true stereo in, then the repro to let it go through everything first just to hear it. I'll keep it on uh, 15 or 30 ips per second. We'll cycle through the four tape formulas and then I'll flip it to 15 ips per second and do the same thing through the four tape formulas. So you can just hear some of the subtle NIST that goes on with this. Now, again, you want to be listening to this on a good set of studio monitors or studio headphones listening to this on earbuds or you know the speaker on an iphone or 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 a tablet is probably not you're going to maybe miss some of the subtleties um this is a subtle kind of a thing and it's supposed to be a subtle kind of a thing it's just kind of glues and kind of um warms up the sound and gives depending on the tape machine you're using a little bit of a bump on the bottom end will usually what will happen so let's cycle through the tape formulas <laughs>
Okay, so it's very subtle between the four tape formulas. Now we're gonna to go to 15 nips per second and we'll do the same thing. Now again, remember, this is a very clean and a very transparent kind of a tape machine. Okay, it's not really gonna add a lot of low end, a lot of top end, a lot of color. It's gonna be very, very subtle. So if you just want something that kind of just subtly brings everything together, this would be a good choice for that where you really don't wanna hear the tape machine too much. You just want it to be a very light amount of processing. This is a good choice. So let's go to uh, 15 nips and let's try that. So on 15 nips per second, what I hear is I hear as you go through from left to right, 254, 56, 499, GP9, it starts up a little bit more crisp, a little bit more present, and it gets a little bit more warm and a little bit more round on the bottom as you go from left to right through the different tape formulas. It's a little bit more audible at 15 nips per second, and that's that would be that would be the case because the tape is moving slower. When the tape is moving faster, it's going to be a little bit more transparent. Let's listen to that one more time. We'll start on the 250. And what I'll do is I'll go 250, 15 ips, then I'll go to 30 ips. Then I'll go back to 15, go to 456. So you could hear the difference between the tape speeds on each tape formula. Here we go. <music> Okay, so there's the differences between the tape formulas at different tape speeds. You can also hear a very subtle difference when you go from the input to the repro. The repro is going to again give you a little bit more fatness, at least that's what I hear on this particular tape machine plugin. And again, the true stereo and the transport modeling, again, it's a very, very subtle kind of a thing. Um, but I would typically leave true stereo engaged, transport modeling engaged, and on repro. This is typically how I would have it set up, but you can play around with it yourself. So again, a subtle tape machine sounds really great in musical. It's not overly hyped. It's what I really like about it. So that is the tape 24. Let's shut that one off and let's now look at the second one for this video. And we're going to take a look at the, uh, which one is this? This is the tape machine 440. So again, we'll try to set it up the same way. Again, we have all the same controls, but it looks a little bit different. We have our repro and our input down here. Now this tape, this tape, um, speed here goes from seven and a half to 15, okay? So let me give you, and then we have our tape speeds, our tape formulas up top, the 254, 56, 499, GP9, just like on the other tape machine. Same kind of internal things that you can adjust here, the true stereo uh, modeling here and the transport modeling as well in the output. So now on the tape 440, this one is based on an Ampex 44B from the late 60s. So it's gonna have more of that older school sound. Um, and so, 
Uh, all the other controls will act as the same way. The tape formulas are exactly the same. This one's gonna have probably a little bit more warm and fatness if it's from the 60s. And those tape machines back in the early 60s, it's very similar to the Waves J37, where they have the seven and a half and a 15, no 30 ips per second. So let's start off on our seven and a half. And again, let's just kind of cycle through and we'll uh, stay on the seven and a half. I'll cycle through the tape formulas. Um, and then uh, then we'll do the same thing at 15 nips per second so you can hear the difference there. Um, and at first here, I will go ahead and I will crank up the input a little bit because I already know we're gonna wanna do that and turn down the output. I'll try to level match it so we can hit the tape at a reasonable level. Here we go. So just turning it on and off, once you level match it at the seven and a half on the 250, you could just hear how it just gets fatter. This, this is gonna be a little bit more fat, a little bit more obvious on the bottom end. So now we're gonna cycle through the tape formulas. Okay, now let's go to the 15 nips per second again. The differences between the tape formula is very similar to like on the other tape machine where it starts off a little bit more present on the 250 and as you move over to the left towards the GP9, it tends to get a little bit warmer, a little bit more bottom ends to my ears. Let's try the same thing on 15 nips per second. Okay, so there you go, going through all the controls here. Now, as one last quick thing before we end this video, let's kind of bring up both of them here and we'll just kind of cycle back and forth between the two just so you can hear the differences between the two uh, plugins themselves. We'll try to set them up to the same thing. We'll keep them on the GP9. We'll do 15 nips because both of these have 15 nips. We'll keep all the true stereo transport modeling and all that stuff engaged. And what I'll do is um, we're gonna have to bypass, we'll have to turn them both on and bypass. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the bypass button in the top left-hand corner of the plugin. We'll start on the tape 440 and then I'll turn bypass it and then go to the uh, tape 24. And you can just hear some of the subtle differences between the two plugins themselves. Here we go.
Okay, so again, pretty similar, but you know, a subtle difference. It seems like the Tape 24 has a little bit more of an open upper mid, whereas the Tape uh, 440 uh, tends to seem to me like it's a little bit more fat on the bottom end with this particular GP9 formula running at 15 nips per second. So there's a look at a couple of the IK Multimedia tape machines. I think they're great. And in the next video, we're gonna look at the Tape 80 and the Tape 99 to finish out this four plug-in package. I think what's really great about this is you get all four tape machines in one package at a really uh, reasonable price. And you can check the link in the description box below if you wanna head on over to sweetwater.com and pick up the tape machines. And full disclosure, that's an affiliate link. So if you purchase something at sweetwater.com, I get a small commission. You're helping me out here uh, at home recording made easy. Um, but if you would rather check them out at iKey Multimedia's website, you can do that as well. But if you check them out at Sweetwater, you'll pay the same price anyway. And you're helping out good old Uncle Dave. But getting the four pack is really cool because now you have a tape machine for your master bus and even some of maybe your individual buses um, for any kind of style of music, any kind of tone you're looking for. I think they did a really nice job. Oh, and the other nice feature about all of their plugins here I forgot to mention is that they're all resizable. Oh, there we go. So you can resize these things and make them larger for small screens on laptops, uh, which is really cool. Um, and that's that's a really nice feature. I wish more plug-in companies did that. So I want to thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. Now, like I said at the beginning, I want to make sure if this is your first time here, especially, I want you to go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I want to give you a $50 free mixing course. It's my gift to you just for visiting there. No strings attached, absolutely free. And also I want to give you something else. If you take the free course, and you really like my style of teaching and you'd like to try out one of my other paid training courses, I want to give you a 25% discount. If you use the coupon code YouTube25 at checkout, it will take 25% off any one of the training courses on my website. All the links will be in the description box below. And until the next time, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all soon. Take care.